Welcome to Mr. Excalibur. My name is Arthur. Welcome back. Um, today, what we're going to be looking at is a sword from Dark Sword Armory. This is their Endril model, or Andalil, the Flame of the West. This, of course, was modeled after the sword that Aragorn held. Um, the Shards of Narsal reforged by the Elves. Uh, this is the sword that Viggo Mortensen's character uh, we saw wield a lot more in The Return of the King, the last of the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy. Um, a little bit about this sword. Um, it is made of 5160 high carbon steel. Um, it uh, has a tang that actually does go all the way into the bottom piece here. And um, I was very excited when the company uh, started making these. Um, my history with Dark Sword Armory is quite a checkered one. And I have to say, uh, this is a bit of a saga. So here we go. I know that Dark Sword Armory is a bit of a sore subject amongst a lot of people in the sword community. People don't know whether or not they want to like them or hate them. Um, when I first started researching the company, I could already tell that the company had gone through some changes. Uh, one of them was the kind of steel that they were using. Apparently, they had started, uh, at least at the beginning, when the company was first started, their blades they used some kind of very simple high carbon steel, uh, most likely one of the 10 series. Uh, that was what they were, that was what they were using. Um, by the time I started looking at them, they had switched to 5160, uh, what they call 5160 spring steel or high carbon spring steel. Um, to me, at the time, that seemed like a really good move because uh, 5160 is a is a tougher metal than some of the very simple uh, carbon steels, uh, what they call the 10 series, like 1060 or 1095. Uh, 5160 uh, can really take a beating quite a bit, um, and um, so I, I thought that was a, a good move. And then I loved the designs. The designs on their website really looked cool. I really enjoyed how they looked. Um, and then of course the the top it all off was that they come out with Andril. This wasn't even they, they even weren't weren't faking it. They were flat out saying, "This is Andril from Lord of the Rings." They had the 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 runes done down the center of the blade and the whole bit. And so I looked up some uh, YouTube videos, I looked at some reviews. There was some somewhat of a division as to how people felt about it. But um, overall I was swaying and I decided to get one. And so that's where the story of uh, this sword <laughs> really begins. Um, so when I first get the sword, I am impressed. The blade is beautiful. The blade of the sword really is nice. The mirror polish that uh, Dark Sword and Armory puts on their swords is really nice. Um, and that was a real attractive uh, part of the overall look at the sword. However, as I started to look at it closer, <coughs> there were a couple things that I found that were a little disturbing. First of all, I found that in my hand, the sword actually creaked quite a bit. And to give you an example of what that sounds like, I have a clip here from um, our friend Scaligram, who has reviewed some other uh, products from Dark Sword Armory. The video here here is not of one of the Andral swords, it's from another one of their models, and it is after he was hitting some trees with it. But the sound that you hear is the same as what I heard in 
the Andrew sword that I got. So take a look at this short clip. Handle trans transverse force is really wait what? That doesn't sound right. I'll bring you close so you can hear that. I'm acting as if the camera is an actual person. Oh well, I have an audience, that's okay. I can be a little eccentric, right? So, can you hear that clicking? Oh. The creaking is worse, actually. That I do not like. Whoa. I'm not sure what happened. Those weren't even particularly hard strikes. Alright, so as you could hear there, the sword made a distinct creaking sound. And from that point on, I did not feel really safe to use it on any kind of hard target. <coughs> Another thing I started noticing about the sword was that it had the hilt and pommel started to turn gray. It's almost like they started to tarnish. The interesting thing is that I found a a, uh, a review on DSA, Dark Sword Armory, that was from a customer who was experiencing the exact same thing. Take a look. And also, these are some pictures that I took of the of my hilt on and, and pommel of my sword. So take a look at these pictures and also the review that someone else wrote. So, I decided to email them over these very issues, and I got no response. Now, to my discredit, I didn't call them up, I didn't pursue it with them probably as much as I should have. Instead, what I started doing was I looked up more reviews on YouTube and more reviews on various sword forums, and found that a number of people were having exactly the same issue. And so, I, uh, I dropped it. And um, I, um, I dropped the issue and decided to, you know what, obviously I got took. That, that, that's how I kind of took it at that point. I, I figured I got took by a company that's, you know, pumping out stuff that isn't that good. Now, 2019 rolls around and I read two different articles that deal with some issues that people had about Dark Sword Armory. One was their customer service. Two was apparently the thinness of their tangs. And three was just the overall quality control of their swords. Um, and what's interesting is the response to that article, um, I'm gonna have the link below here. These were two different articles published on Sword Buyer's Guide. And both articles uh, were responded to by DSA, and the response was very encouraging. So what I decided to do was decided to uh, respond and basically say, okay, here's my original email from 2016. That's when I originally bought this. And um, I read these two articles, and I attached them to my email, and I said, this has kind of encouraged me to say that your you know, customer service has, has improved and that I might actually get some help. And I sent them along the pictures of the hilt 
and I, you know, questioned about what was going on in the handle again, just like I had, you know, three years before, and I said, is there anything you can do for me? And they said, yes, as a matter of fact, you can. They looked at my order number, and it turns out the hilt material that they used to use prior to, I believe, 2018, uh, so this is a very recent change, is that the hilt material on this particular sword used to be used, uh, they used a, a zinc alloy of some kind, and that's why it would corrode or kind of tarnish that almost powdery gray uh, look to it. They said basically now the model, the Admiral Sword, now uses mild steel. So simple mild steel for the hilt and the pommel. Um, they did ask for some money up front. Um, I'd had the sword for three years and it had been basically sitting as a pretty wall hanger, so I figured, you know what, why not? I, I actually would like to get this thing functional and usable. So I decided to go ahead and send in that amount of money and um, have them take the sword back, scabbard included, and see what they could do for it. Uh, about three weeks later, uh, this has to go all the way up to Canada and back to where I am here in the United States. And uh, three weeks later, got it back. And what I pulled out of the box actually was quite surprising. Um, the handle was much more robust. The, so the, the build was infinitely more solid. The hilt and, uh, and pommel here were of a lot better look and build and the blade was not the blade I turned in <laughs> as it turns out um, I emailed them back and I said everything looks great except the blade doesn't look like the one I turned in in fact it looks a lot sharper they said well as it turns out there were some uh, some other issues that we discovered when we disassembled the sword we decided to give you a whole new piece and I said you know what done. Done deal. Obviously, uh, this is the case of a company that is still on the learning curve, and they are continuing to do so. Uh, there are a couple models from Dark Sword Armory that I'm going to be reviewing in the future, um, but this one was the one that I started off with, so that's why I figured I would review first. Um, and um, so when I got it back, it had a lot better feel to it. Um, if you'd like to say just how much of a better feel, take a look at this. All right, here are just some additional notes on the kind of the rebuilt, the redone version of the Andral Sword. Here you're seeing some pictures of how they've redesigned the hilt and pommel. Um, one of the uh, problems that I had had was that it was made of an inferior material. They've since changed that to this nice mild steel with this nice chromed look on both the hilt and the pommel. Uh, my scabbard did not come with a belt, but then again, that was my own choice. Um, one of the other issues that people do have with the sword is that gap you see in between the hilt and the blade. That still hasn't yet, yet to be resolved. Uh, but here you see the pictures by DSA and how they construct the tangs of their swords. And you can see, at least in these pictures, the fact that they are building a lot heavier tangs for these swords. Alrighty, here's some a little bit more information on the sword as I was uh, taking a look at it. One of the things that you can't hear here because I've got the, uh, the sound on the actual video turned down is that the, the scabbard actually rattles quite a bit. Um, that is something that has been improved over, the, uh, over time. Um, I'm going to be reviewing a sword later on also made by DSA where that has com been completely uh, fixed. Um, but I think what the issue was here was I think they gave me my original scabbard back with a new blade and so it fits it really nice it just is is rather loose inside but you know what to me that really isn't a big issue I know it is with 
with some other folks, but for me, it, it, it really is not. Uh, the sword really does handle quite nicely in the hand. Uh, this is, you know, slightly longer than what would be considered a, uh, a long sword. And so it really does, you know, lend itself to, you know, a nice two-handed grip. I use gloves on all these swords, uh, mainly just because it's a, it's a comfort issue for myself. It really doesn't matter if it's either a, uh, either a European sword or a Japanese katana. The sword plows through the plastic bottles well enough. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, after I finished this demonstration, I didn't see any scratch marks on the blade whatsoever. So even though it's it's 5160 steel, I've used 5160 steel swords before, and usually they at least so show some surface scratch marks after going through some of the tougher plastic bottles here. Um, the milk bottles, it, it slices through, you know, like anything else, uh, but some of the tougher ones here, it puts a nice gash through. Uh, that one, it literally just whacked off the, the, the head of it, the, the top of the bottle, and then, of course, when I uh, try to really plow through it, the tip on this sword was needle sharp. I mean, they really made the tip of the sword really quite sharp, and so the ability to go through stuff really was never any in any question. Um, this is the the small little water bottle, and it just you know it just flies through it. Um, it it's not as smooth as as other swords that I've had, um, and the the edge they put on it was pretty sharp. In fact, towards the end of the video, um, while I was cleaning it, it actually sliced right through the rag that I was using to clean it, and I cut myself on it. And um, right here, even though you, you may not have noticed, the very tip just sliced through. Now at that point where I stabbed the bottle, um, the tip of the sword jammed into the top of the ladder there. And um, I'm going to show you a little bit about what that did to the sword later on. Now this is something that I put into all my videos, however long, however short. Whenever you guys do bottle shigiri, wipe off your sword for crying out loud before you put it back in the sheath. I see so many these, these videos where people don't do this. Wipe it off, um, give it a really good, you know, wipe off or rub down, and then put some kind of lubricant. I use WD-40 because it's a nice thin oil. It, uh, it gets the residue off and cleans it, and then when I can wipe it off, I feel good about putting it back into the, uh, into the scabbard. Now, this footage right here shows what happened to the tip of the sword. This is what I get for buying a sword with a, you know, a, literally a, a needle tip, and that was it got bent. Um, it got dinged pretty badly. Uh, but that's really all the damage that I did to the sword during this testing. Now these videos here are of much older models of the Andril Sword. Um, I'll have a link to this video if you want to take a look at it. Uh, this guy's performing some uh, Tamashigiri on tatami mats, and you can see that it does chop through it pretty well. I don't know what kind of edge this guy put on it. Uh, DSA has some different options. When originally I got the sword, it, I didn't ask for an additional sharpening, and it was already pretty sharp. It had a nice single belled edge to it, and was already sharp. When I got that, when I got it redone, I got back, and it had obviously been sharpened. It had a nice, rough cutting edge to it. This is a little bit of review of a guy just kind of cutting through watermelons, and you know, obviously a, a nice weighted sharpened sword here is going to just slice through it. But again, a lot of fun, enjoyed cutting with it. So after the reviews and after the cutting, uh, we're left with a couple, still some issues. As you guys saw in the video at the end, at one point when I plowed through a bottle, my, the tip of the sword got jammed into the the, the ladder that I had the bottle sitting on, it actually tweaked the tip. It actually tweaked the end of the sword. 
So I don't know if that was, you know, mostly my oops or, you know, again, we're running into quality issues. Um, but overall, I really enjoy it. Um, a lot of people complain that DSA swords are overly heavy. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I actually like the heavier build swords. It's what I first started playing around with when I started buying swords. I started bu buying swords that were they were overly heavy, they weren't built very well. I think DSA swords are actually built very well. If you want to take a look at just how well they're built, take a look at this. Hi guys, so based on a couple of questions and a couple of concerns over on the forum, uh, we decided to show you guys the quality of our swords, as opposed to having people just say anything about our swords, we decided to let our weapons, our products speak for themselves. So, as you probably know, or should know at least, the in order to verify the quality of a sword, see how durable it is, the structural integrity of a sword, you need to do a flex test. This puts a tremendous amount of stress on the blade, and if there's anything that is not properly made, it will snap. Uh, so basically, flex tests are done over the head. Generally, you'll see people do it over, over their uh, thigh. Um, I like doing an abusive flex test. Uh, basically pushing it beyond the limit, beyond what is recommended. So just to really show you guys, I like trying to break the product basically in order because that tells me what's the level of structural integrity of the sword. So this is a 1332, one of our Gothic swords. So I'm going to do a flex test. Again, an abusive flex test, not just a simple flex test. So you guys get a kind of an objective view of what our quality of our swords and how structural, structural integrity of our swords. So, this is an abusive test. So you go beyond 90 degrees. And I haven't seen anyone do this with other products. I'm just leaving it there. It's pretty much Yeah. And it should return to true. Okay? So this is when you know that the sword is good quality. And I'll take another one. Same thing. Because we all know there's a lot of critics out there who say, yeah, it was all staged. So here's another one. This is our 1340 military template sword. It's gonna do the same destructive test. Again, beyond 90 degrees. And you just don't flex it and let it go. You really push it to the limit by leaving it there. So if there's anything that's weak, it will just snap right off. Again, return to true. So this is how you know if your sword is properly heat treated and tempered, which as far as I'm concerned, is the most important thing in a functional sword. If your sword is not heat treated, it's not tempered, forget it. It's only a piece of decoration. It won't last in combat. You won't be able to use it. So that's how you test to see if the product is So that kind of gives you an idea of just how, you know, how durable these blades are. And I think that's largely due to the kind of steel that they're using. Um, it, it's a very kind of interesting relationship that I'm, I have with, with Dark Sword Armory, at least in my mind, in that their designs really are really neat. Are they the most historical things in the world? Definitely not. Um, this obviously is not a historical piece. It's a fantasy piece that's been given a, a nice functional blade. So is it going to behave like an actual uh, long sword or two-handed sword from the Middle Ages? No, it's not. Um, they designed them to look like that in the movies, but that's not necessarily the case here. Um, this is a this is a fantasy piece, and so you know it's it's going to behave that way. 
Is it worth your money? I'm of two minds about that, and I will tell you why. I think about the history that I have with this particular model, and the stuff that I went through, and I'd have to say, no, it's not worth it. And at the same time, now that I finally got the, the a more refined version of this model, um, I love it. You know, I love it. I'm, I'm kind of bummed about this tip kind of getting bent here at the end. But overall, you know, I love their stuff. Like I said, um, in future reviews, I fully plan on buying some more models from Dark Sword Armory to take a look at them. Um, there are some models out there that literally are undergoing revamp. And so my overall impression here, and this is to kind of wrap up this review, is that Dark Sword Armory is a company that has a very, very steep learning curve. <laughs> um, they are listening to people in the community. They are paying attention to what people are saying about their swords. Their models are good. The designs are good. It is the finishing. It is the construction. And in some cases, uh, the, the actual materials that they are continually improving on and changing. Uh, and I think that's a big credit. Um, I think that's a, that's a big plus in the category, you know, pros and cons. Uh, that's a big pro for Dark Star Armory to be willing to admit that in a lot of cases the materials that they have used in the past weren't good and that they really are trying to make very, very functional pieces that um, are, you know, fun to swing around with and, again, are functional. You can do backyard cutting. cutting. You can do Thomas Shigiri, you can do Bottle Shigiri, um, and you can actually use them in cutting contests. So I encourage you to look them up, find a design that you like, and you know, take a look, take a swing, see if it's something that you really enjoy. So uh, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Uh, Dark Star Armory is one of those subjects that's kind of People either like it or hate it, and I can kind of see both sides, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm still willing to, willing to give them a chance, and if you look at some of the more recent reviews of some of their other pro uh, products on the internet, you can see that more and more people are giving them a chance too. So take a look at their website. Um, again, hope you enjoyed it. Have a better one. See you next time.